Hello, and welcome back to the Building with AppSheet series. I'm Google Developer Advocate Christian Schalk, and in this episode, we will introduce how to build and customize user interfaces in AppSheet. Let's get started. Building modern web application user interfaces, or simply UIs, can be one of the most difficult tasks in application development. Fortunately, AppSheet greatly simplifies UI development with the following key features. Use case-based intelligent view types a collection of UI building blocks enabling easy and rapid UI assembly. Declarative UI branding, which provides point-and-click customization of an app's overall look and feel. And finally, AppSheet's conditional formatting feature allows for dynamic visual formatting of UI elements. Let's review these three key features in more detail. AppSheet view types serve as pre-built building blocks for rapid UI construction of mobile and or desktop UIs. When generating an app, AppSheet automatically adds appropriate view types based on the backend data, thus requiring minimal or even no further customization. AppSheet currently provides 11 distinct view types that are ready to run out of the box and are based on the most common web app UI patterns. Included are the familiar table, form, gallery, as well as other specialized view types such as chart, calendar, or map all of which do not require coding or extensive customization. Let's take a look at AppSheet's view types in action. So we'll return to our existing tasks list demo app from prior episodes, and you'll recall that we have two tables, tasks and owners that are related to each other. And uh, I'll switch over to the UX tab so we can do some further customizations. So as you can see, we have three primary views for this app. And say for the owners app, maybe I wanna go ahead and customize it. So to do that, I pop it open in the editor and I can really select from any number of features or properties that I can customize the app with. So in this case, maybe I wanna change the, the header that shows up in each row to include the email as well as the name. And then also I think I showed that you can change like things like the image, whether it's round or square, et cetera. So this is all pretty trivial stuff. Let's go ahead and create some brand new views. So for this, I'm gonna click on the new view option here, and I'm just gonna select that I want a map view type. And so automatically it's selected the owner's table because I happen to actually have a column that has address data, and then it's ready to run. So in, as you can see here, the map column was already selected with the address column that is, and then I can also customize it further. Maybe I want an aerial map versus just an automatic map. Um, and then you'll also can see that as I click on each point in the map, it pulls up the respective record. And so that's basically it. I might want to select the position of where the button is to invoke it. So maybe I'll just go ahead and put a map icon there on the bottom the left there. All right, so let's create a new view. Let's create a chart view. So I click on the new view button there and I specify chart. And here we go, it has the tasks already selected. Um, let's go ahead and put this on the rightmost of the footer. And then we can also select the chart type, uh, which, you know, there's a lot of different options to choose from. But in this case, I think I like the uh, default that it gave me. It also gave me a group aggregate, which makes sense, you know, basically counting like the, the different uh, status for the different uh, projects or tasks that is. And also for the chart columns, it makes sense to just go ahead and select the status. So in this case, it already predicted what kind of a use case or a usage pattern that I wanted and gave me essentially what I wanted right out of the box without any customization. All right, well, that's basically it. I have essentially a fully functioning uh, application. Oh, maybe I'll go ahead and change the uh, icon a bit. So I'll have the, uh, the chart uh, show up as the icon now on the bottom right and everything's all good to go. I think I have my application now further customized with some new additional view types. The next UI feature that I'll discuss is the AppSheet UI branding feature. This is a feature which provides easy app look and feel customization without requiring any knowledge of HTML or CSS. This feature provides a point and click environment and allows you to customize an app's overall visual theme, primary color, app logo, along with many other visual properties. So we'll return to our demo and I'll update the overall look and feel by clicking on the brand tab at the top here. And then right away, you can see that we have a lot of options here. We can go ahead and select the theme, primary color, the app logo, launch image, uh, et cetera. So I can just walk through some of these features and just try it out to see if I like it. So maybe I don't like the uh, dark theme. Maybe I'll even customize the color a little bit more. 
And then a few other options for whether we show certain things in the header, like the app logo, uh, the view name, and some of the other options here. So I can just toggle to whichever ones I want there. So there you go. So in just a few clicks, I was able to customize the app's overall look and feel. And finally, AppSheet's conditional formatting feature enables expression-based formatting of UI elements. For example, you can format a task to appear in bold red when it is due today. Also, other UX options enable application-wide settings, such as overall text, font, and system message localization. So to create a new conditional format rule, I'll go ahead and click on Format Rules here. And then I can select either from these pre-coded rules or just create one from scratch. So to do this, all I have to do is specify when this condition is true. And for my use case, I want to show any tasks that are due today. So to do that, I create an expression where I say due date equals today. There we go. And once that evaluates correctly, I'll click Save. And then now I just need to specify which columns I want it to apply the rule to. And so in this case, it's going to apply it to those three columns, and I want it to change the text to red. So right away, we're able to see that this particular task, which is now corresponding to today, is actually shown in red. And I can even do some further customization, such as setting it to bold or under underline. Uh, but that's basically it. So I was able to create a new conditionally formatting rule based off of any task due today. This concludes the Building UIs and AppSheet episode. For more info on AppSheet, Google Cloud, and Google Workspace, check out the links in the description below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this series so you don't miss out. As always, thanks for watching.